I have a question, Stuart. Yes. What is, can you talk about what is anger truly? And um, how, do you, how do you deal with when feelings of anger come up? Well, anger is simply a, it's the lack of an ability to, uh, it's a chaotic emotion, chaotic, you know, it's out of our control. We lose control of the emotion and we always focus it on somebody else, you know, and take out our own anxieties, our own problems on other people. You know, anger, you know, look, I mean, when I was younger, I had a great deal of anger in me. I really did. I was angry at the world. I was probably the first and maybe last angry young man when I was younger. You know, and I didn't know what to do with it. I'd see something I didn't like, it would get me upset, and sometimes I'd be upset for weeks at a time. I had no idea how to control that anger, what to do with it, how to abate it, how to get it quiet in myself, until I began to study with my spiritual teacher. And then I began to realize that instead of projecting the anger out at the world, because all it's going to bring back is anger. You get angry at somebody, you yell and fight with them. What comes back is anger, yelling, and fighting. Because you get exactly what you give off. But a very incredible way of using anger is to take it you know, into the third chakra. Bring it down into the... Because anger is just energy out of control. That's all it is. And if you master it and you can focus it in the third chakra, the anger will dissipate. It'll disappear. And not only will it dissipate, it'll help you to build a strong inner life. And you'll know every time that anger manifests in you, you know exactly what to do with it and how to keep it from hurting somebody else and how to keep you from getting hurt in a situation. And each of us has our own stuff that we get angry at, you know? I mean, it's very different for every human being, but the result is the same. It's energy out of control, energy that we haven't mastered, frustration, the inability to create harmony and inner balance inside ourselves. That takes work and that takes learning how to discipline your anger. Bring it to the chakra below the navel. At first, this is not going to be easy, but then we're kind of like have Lovian dogs, you know? We have to condition ourselves to do things. And when you learn to do that, you know, the anger will dissipate itself. It will become chi. It'll become energy. that will help you to grow and make it possible for you to truly even have a spiritual life because you will learn how to transform one thing inside yourself that absolutely does nothing but tear a human being apart. Where it comes from, why it comes from, I don't know, Cyrus. I, I, I don't have answers to that. How to use it, how to benefit from it, how to gain control and mastery over it, that I've learned how to do. And then you'll discover in your life, you get less angry. It's not worth it. It's not worth dissipating your life, throwing your life away because somebody does something you don't like. Better to go inside yourself and find out what part of you is, you know, what part of you responds with anger and then to learn how to master it. And it's easy to get angry in this world. There's so much crap that goes on. I mean, my God, if you just have to pick up the newspaper, go online, read the media, you know, hang out with another human being for half a day, you'll get angry at them. <laughs> They'll do something that'll piss you off and get you angry. But it's not really them. It's just us 
that have that weakness inside that something they do touches that weakness and brings it out of us. And if we learn to master that weakness in ourselves, we forgive people, we don't get angry at them. And we don't waste our energy because all anger does is waste energy. I mean, I've told the story a thousand times. I'll tell it again, you know, because it's a great story. And when I was younger, you know, I spent a year living in Ruby's house. And I was running a business. I was teaching. I was going to university. I, I mean, my day was like 19 hours a day, you know. And one day I said to Rudy, I said, Rudy, I, I'm really tired. I can I go up to Big Indian? He had just gotten Big Indian. Can I go up there and maybe take three or four days and just try to get this tiredness out of my system? So he said to me, yes. He said, that's what it's for. Go up there, you know. So I took a bus up to Big Indian and walked to the ashram and found myself a room and unpacked a few things I had with me. And I said, you know, you're not going to sit around here and just try to get over your tiredness. Find something to do that can help benefit this place. So I looked out of the window of my room and there was a tractor sitting there with a grass cutter on it. And there was a yard about an acre. <laughs> it's about an acre of grass that was probably up to my waist, if not higher. And I said, well, there's something you can do. Get on the tractor and cut grass. I said, that's a pretty cool thing to do. So I went down, I got on the tractor, I started it up, and I started cutting the grass. And from nowhere, this guy, you know, he comes running across the ashram, screaming at me. Bah, bah, bah. I mean, it's like I had just, like, God knows, set off a bomb there or something, screaming at me about notching me on the tractor and da, 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 da. what right do you have that? So I get off the tractor, and I knew the guy. He was a friend of mine, for God's sake. I knew him. And he's screaming at me, and we're like nose to nose. He's yelling at me. And I had done 50 things wrong. I'd been there 20 minutes. So I said, Stuart, you know, usually you get into a fist fight with somebody with nonsense. Like, I said, just listen to him. Listen. Don't get angry at him. Don't get upset at him. Just listen. So he berated me for about 15 minutes. And I didn't say one word to him. I didn't defend myself, nothing. And when it was all over and all of his anger was exhausted, he looked at me with tears in his eyes and he gave me a big hug. And he said, thank you. I'll never forget that as long as I live. A big hug and he had tears. He needed somebody to talk to. He needed somebody to get rid of all that anger who wasn't going to, you know, jump back in his face and get into a fist fight with him. He needed somebody who loved him enough. He said, okay, I know you're upset. And I can take your anger. I can not get crazy. I don't have to get into I'm not going to scream and yell at you and tell you why I'm right and you're wrong. That was amazing. And when he was finished, he had tears in his eyes. And he looked at me and with such a kind voice said, thank you. It taught me something amazing about what it means to control one's anger. And generally when people are angry with you, it has nothing to do with you. Oh, you might've done something stupid or so, you know, but it, doesn't matter. It's the thing in them that they need to learn to master. And very often, you get more results in a situation by just keeping your mouth shut and listening and letting the person vent. <laughs> vent. Doesn't matter, you know? It only matters if there's something weak in you that, that, you, that it matters, you know? But if you have that inner strength, it doesn't matter if somebody is telling you this and telling you that and yelling at you. What's the big deal? It's kind of Gandhi politics, you know? 
politics of love that we can share with other people. So where anger comes from, what it is, it's different for everybody. It manifests the same, but it's different for everybody. How to manage it is a really sacred thing, a miraculous thing. And it keeps wars from starting and, you know, fighting from starting and people really hurting each other. Just learning to manage your anger. I hope it's clear. And, I'm, you know, it takes, I mean, another story, you know, I, 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 I used to know a guy who was like a, you know, he had five black belts in martial. I mean, he was at the pinnacle of the martial arts field, this guy. And uh, he was really a master. And I'm walking on the street with him one day. And I said to him, I said, you know, the greatest martial artists, the real masters, they'll never get into a fight. Their chi is so strong that it will dissolve somebody else's anger before the anger even comes to them. And he looked at me with a smile on his face and he said, you're right. So if you build that kind of chi in yourself, you'll save yourself a lot of arguments. People won't come to you with their anger. And their anger will dissipate before they even get to you. I'll bring you a flower instead. It's like these crazy people in the in the Middle East. Everybody's getting revenge on everybody. <laughs> you know, it, there's not going to be anybody living in the Middle East. They're all going to get vengeance and revenge. And I'm going to kill you. You kill me. We can. You know, it's insane. They would just stop and just take go inside and build the little chi inside and stop being so angry and getting revenge and you know, the whole thing would end. Meanwhile, so many people get killed because of the rightness in one crazy person's mind, you know? Does anyone else have a question? So I hope it's clear what I'm talking about. And you're not going to be successful at this the first time you try to do it. But keep conditioning yourself to doing this kind of thing, building chi, listening to somebody, having a little compassion because they're upset. Don't take it personally. <laughs> Don't take their craziness personally. Does anyone have a question? Anyone else have a question? And there'll be meditation tomorrow evening. Uh, just two things. Next Sunday, there won't be a meditation class because I'm holding a retreat next weekend. I've announced it all week. I have to keep announcing it because every Sunday when I have a retreat, so <laughs> did you take me off your list? I get emails from people. Is there class today? So there won't be a class next Sunday because I'm going to be holding be a lot of classes next Sunday, but I can't do them online. And the second thing is, I just want you to know, people that help out by making donations to what I do here, I have a great deal of gratitude 
to all of you, every single one of you. You know, it makes it possible for me to do these sessions online. And I think, you know, you know, people, some people, you know, whatever pe people afford a little, some afford more. I just have a lot of gratitude and a lot of thanks for people doing that, you know, for really trying to help out and contributing something towards making these classes work. And I think it's an amazing thing. And I'm just very grateful to you. And just remember, it doesn't come to me without gratitude, whether it's $5 or $100, whatever you contribute. You know, I see the contributions as a gift. And I really think they're very sacred. And they really make it possible for this these classes to exist. You know, I don't have to go out and work as a taxi cab driver or open another art gallery to, <laughs> at this point of my life to support myself. So so thank you, and God bless you all for that. I really appreciate it. Uh, does anyone else have a question I would like to ask? Okay, there'll be meditation tomorrow evening, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing everyone. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Bless you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. You're Thanks. Welcome. Good night. Good night.